A recent vulnerability discovered in some instances of LeaveSSH allows an attacker to totally bypass the password authentication by simply presenting a message that says they've already authenticated successfully. We'll show you how this works and how to exploit it on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. SSH is an extremely popular protocol used to remotely log into a computer. Now, while it doesn't go as far as VNC to give you a full window with all the nice GUI and the kind of experience of sitting behind a computer, it gives you a command prompt allowing you to load programs, run programs, and otherwise modify different parts of the system. Now, if you get a root shell via SSH, aka you're logged into SSH as root, it means you can pretty much do anything you want on a system. And that's a pretty big deal if someone were able to just get root via SSH on a computer that you're using. Now, we use SSH in our Raspberry Pi project where we use it to control our Kali Linux Raspberry Pi. However, we're using OpenSSH and not LibSSH, so we wouldn't be affected by this particular vulnerability. Now, LibSSH is used by a lot of servers, and this is a pretty big problem because lots of things rely on servers, and having the ability to simply log into one and bypass the password is a pretty big deal. Now, how does this work? Well, usually when you attempt to log into a server via SSH, you need to prevent, uh, present a username and password. Instead, in this uh, vulnerability, we simply present the same message we would present if we had succeeded at logging in, and for whatever reason, there's a bug in the software that forces SSH to just accept us without even asking us a password. At that point, we're logged in and can do pretty much anything we want, which is a pretty big problem depending on what that server is. So how would we test this? Well, there's actually already a Python program that lets us select an IP address that we want to test it against and go ahead and run this against our own server to see whether or not it's vulnerable. Now, there's a couple of other modific modifications we can make in order to make this more useful, such as using Nmap to scan for different ports because a system administrator might try to be clever and move a vulnerable SSH installation off of port 22 and think that they fixed the problem. Now that's not the case because we can use something like Nmap to scan for different ports that SSH might be located on and still locate the service that's vulnerable. Now to take advantage of this, you'll just need Python and a computer running Kali Linux or even a MacBook or something like a Windows computer, provided you have Python and the necessary libraries installed, which are all included in a nice install file. Now once, all you, have, uh, once you have all those things together, you can begin. Now, let's go to the GitHub page in order to actually install the code we'll need to determine whether or not we found a vulnerable device. Now, we'll need to go to the GitHub page here, which is located at Leap Security, and click on the cloner download link so that we can copy this and paste it into our git clone command. So back in our terminal window, we'll just type git clone and then the address on the GitHub repository. And as you can see, it didn't work here because we already have it downloaded, but you should have it then installed on your system. So let's go to CD and then leave SSH scanner. And when I LS and list the files in that directory, you can see we have a requirements.txt ready for us to install. Now to use this, we'll just type pip install tack r requirements.txt. Now I already have this installed, so I can go ahead and just use the command, but once this finishes installing all the required libraries, we can move on to the next step and actually run the command to see whether or not we have something that responds to this tool. To do this, we will use the following command, which is pretty straightforward, and I'll go through to explain what it's doing. First, we're using Python, but we're not using Python 3 as I usually specify, so make sure you're not using Python 3 when you run this command because it will simply fail. Next, from within this folder, we'll be running the libssh-scan.py, and then we'll need to provide a target, although it doesn't need a specific flag in order to specify this. 
Last, we can specify whether we, we want the script to be aggressive or not, which will involve actually attempting to see if the exploit works and trying to pull some banner information about the device that might be being exported. So here we'll use an example IP address and see what it looks like when we get a positive result. Let's run it and see what happens. There we go. We can see that our test server is likely vulnerable to the authentication bypass attack. If we see something like this, we should definitely upgrade or update the system that we're running because it means that it's likely somebody could simply get root access just by presenting something like this tool. While it's easy to use tools like Nmap or Shodan to find vulnerable devices, it's important that you only test this out on devices you have permission to audit because it does actually attempt to authenticate and log into the device you specify. Meaning that if you happen to go up against maybe a protected government computer or a honeypot, you could get in trouble depending on what you've accessed. Now, in order to make sure this vulnerability doesn't affect a server you have control over or your company has control over, make sure that you update libssh to a version that doesn't have this vulnerability, because it only exists in some of the older ones, so if you're up to date, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, shoot me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.